getting a report from a person 500 meters down the beach to get some person. Copy that, so we'll set up a flight hub job. POI seems to be 400 meters down the beach, possibly unconscious. going past them now. Hi. I'm Ryan Atkins from Australian UAV Service, a division of Surf Life Saving in New South Wales. We've been using drones since 2017 as part of our shark mitigation process along 50 locations across the east coast of Australia. We look for sharks, dangers and threats to public and general safety, along with assisting in search and rescue operations or being called upon by other emergency services. Over the years, we've seen rapid advancement in drone technology, especially around payloads. Where drones used to only carry a single camera setup, they now come equipped with multi-sensor payloads and even loudspeaker and spotlight attachments. The full turnkey of having an autonomous drone in a box is the next big step for the RPAS industry and especially for us here at the Australian UAV Service. In missions where time is of the essence, such as a shark attack, the Mission Control Room in Sydney has the potential to launch a DJI M30T into the skies within one minute of receiving a distress call from anywhere along the east coast of New South Wales. Here the drone can be utilised in multiple beneficiary ways such as being tasked to look for the shark responsible for the attack, being used as a broadcast system to get beachgoers out of the water and to safety, and also to capture data of the surroundings and relay that information onto lifeguards at the scene. All the information being captured from the drone will be relayed in real time directly to the mission control from the dock into the cloud with Flight Hub 2. The operator is able to both broadcast a message and analyse the data captured from the payloads, which consists of a thermal imaging camera, wide-angle views, and a powerful hybrid zoom camera, all used to look for the responsible shark and any beach goers within the vicinity. For search and rescue based missions, generally a request can take time. As a UAV pilot will have to be tasked for the job, they then need to travel to the location and unpack their equipment and be ready for takeoff. Sometimes there may even be no asset available due to adverse weather conditions. This is where strategically placed docks will be able to fill in the gaps, being able to fly seven kilometres away from the dock, allowing surf life saving better response times and to cover more ground before local pilots arrive on scene. In instances where no surf life saving services are rostered on, the dock will play a key role in monitoring the beaches and looking out for dangerous conditions. Having the broadcast system will be a huge benefit to pass critical information onto the public. We deal with some of the harshest conditions with sand, rain, salt and wind belting us every day. So it's important for these docks to have a high IP rating to deal with these conditions and to come with a built-in weather station to ensure the dock is able to handle the adverse conditions and we are able to operate 24-7 utilising the spotlight and infrared payloads. Whilst there are a few regulatory limitations right now in place with the dock, we look forward to exploring how the dock can be used to build a fuller and more coherent service on top of our existing fleet all while providing greater assistance to other emergency services.